Yeah, one of the things that uh, we can unpack, you know, the, the strategy and we'll kind of get into that. But one of the things that really drew me to you was the you, you had a LinkedIn post and you spoke about proactive storytelling versus reactive storytelling. And I can you know, speak from my own experience here. I think what you're basically saying is in most cases, like it's the case with me, somebody says, we need a case study. Uh, I'll take Upper Media as an example, an agency. And you go, okay, great. We need a case study. And then you go speak to the account manager. You go speak to the salesperson, whoever it is. And you say, well, maybe we could do this one. Maybe we could do this one. And they say, well, uh, I think that person's left. And uh, actually, I'm actually not sure where the data is for those campaigns. And actually, I'm not really sh- fully sure what the story was that was. So do you think that most people kind of try and reverse engineer case studies where your stuck is basically saying you need to be more proactive? So yeah, if you could speak on that. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that's, that is what I think when you really distill it down and you look at the most successful companies, why can some companies do a hundred stories and others struggle to get one? Why can companies, uh, some companies make time to, to do these things? Why do some companies have no issues with buying and other companies struggle tooth and nail? Um, and it is that for most companies, case studies are happy accidents. They are these reactive exercises as you're describing where someone puts up their hand, someone's had a win, or leadership goes, we need more case studies, shoves it to a team who has no processes, no systems, no no, no plan. And, and the reality of case studies is that they're a team sport. And most companies don't see them that way. They, they go, marketing, go produce the case studies, do what you, do you got to do. Well, marketing is inherently reliant on who else is closest to the customer, who owns the relationship, right? Is that sales? Is that an AE, a BDR? Is that a CSM? Who is closest to the customer? Where does that context actually live? Who is making the ask? How are they making the ask? What expectation are they setting? You know, one of the, the revelations for companies when we talk to them is realizing that your struggles to get by in an approval are because you have 10 different reps asking 10 different ways with no consistency, no plan they can take to the customer say, here are the steps we'll go through, right? And so we advocate for, hey, there, there is an opportunity here to engineer. Stop looking at case studies as an asset or just an offshoot of your existing work and look at them as a program, look at them as the byproduct of underlying systems. And, and that's what we encourage companies to engineer. So, you know, think carefully about number one, start with a strategy, right? What stories are going to benefit your business or revenue goals? What are the angles? What are the themes? What are the, we call them coverage gaps, right? Um, And those coverage gaps might change quarterly. They might change yearly. But look at, you know, what gaps in our content or what gaps in the market or what gaps in sales, for example, like, are you know, go talk to your sales team, SaaS people, go ask them, like, what objections are you come up against? Who are we constantly being compared to? What roles are, are vetoing these deals? Those are all opportunities for stories that currently only live within sales's head. 